And good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jim Arnold, and I have been with IBEC for 16 years now. I am your senior judge, and I've been here longer than almost longer than you've been alive. So, and this is your first IBEC, so we, we really welcome you, and we're very, very glad that you're here today. And with me, with me, uh, we have one live judge today, and well, she will introduce herself, and then we have three that are remote. And so everyone will get a chance to introduce themselves. I think we'll start. Let's start right here, and and you can talk a little bit about yourselves, and then the team the team will go after that. Great. So hello, very nice to meet you. I'm Carrie Penman, and I'm the Chief Risk and Compliance Officer for Navex. Very proud that Navex is a sponsor of this event. So uh, been in the ethics and compliance space for almost thirty years, and started at Westinghouse Electric Corporation in Pittsburgh, and I love the field, and I really love IBEC. I've been doing this probably at least 10 years. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very long time. So it's a great, great, uh, great process, and thank you all for, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Sean, Sean, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Sean Simpson. Um, I live in France. Uh, I know a lot about LVMH, um, and my daughter went to Fordham. And I uh, taught business ethics <laughs> for years uh, in the French University and in the American uh, Study Abroad programs. Thank you. Thank you. Vera? Hello, everyone. My name is Vera Chiripanova. It's really great to uh, see almost uh, familiar faces, <laughs> Jim Carrey. Um, I'm based in Italy. I'm calling uh, from Italy today. I'm a practitioner, I'm not an academic, I'm a practitioner, I'm an ethics advisor, I work with international organizations, and I have been in ethics and compliance for at least 16 years now. It's my second competition, I'm really excited, it's my already second uh, case for today. Um, and I also sit on a steering committee of an academic conference called Compliance Net, and it looks like the next year Compliance Net is going to come to Fordham. Wonderful. Love to see you there. Thanks, Vera. Uh, hi, hi everybody. Um, good evening from Madrid in Spain. I think that uh, the three judges are based in Europe. <laughs> so it's great to hear that. And it's for me a pleasure to be here again. I think this is the fourth or fifth uh, intake of this competition. And it was great to, to, can, to can be in, in the previous years. Uh, so I'm really excited to can listen to the amazing and marvelous uh, presentation that I'm, I'm sure you are going to, 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 to present. Thank you so much. Liam, we have a little more volume. I'll see what I can do. Okay, very good. Now let's uh, hear from our team. Yes. Introduce yourself to the judges. Yes, uh, so my name is Sevi Perez. I'm a marketing senior at the Gabelli School of Business at Fordham. Um, I mainly, I'm based in the Roseville campus, which is in the Bronx. And yeah, it's gonna be nice to be like yeah, my name is Seth Barani. I'm a finance major and a junior at Fordham University. I am also based on the Bronx campus, and I'm really looking forward to presenting with our team. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Ashley Yoshi. I'm a marketing major um, at Fordham University, and I'm a sophomore, and I'm also based on the Bronx campus, and I'm really looking forward to presenting today. Wonderful, wonderful. I see that you're all looking into the camera, and that's good. Yes. You. I know that sometimes it's difficult. People want to look over there because that's where the eyes are, and that's where people are looking at you. But the more you can look at the camera back there, we sure appreciate that. I have a little uh, paragraph to read to you. You have seen this before. Oh, actually, I completely forgot. Before we start, would you two like a copy of our executive summary? I have a couple printed. Uh, you, you have your copy? I have my copy. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone you. does. Appreciate that, but we all got them online. So. Okay. This is something you've heard before. It's all over our website, but we start this uh, for every, every uh, uh, presentation just so you're all on a level playing field. In this part of the competition, you are taking on a fictional business identity and assigning a fictional business identity to the judges. And what I see here is that we are the board of directors of Louis Vuitton. Please make sure everyone knows who you are. We already have that and who they are before you begin. You'll have 25 minutes with a five minute cushion to describe the legal, financial, and ethical dimensions of the problem and to recommend a solution that passes muster on all three of these counts. 
During this time, we will not interrupt you. When you are finished, the judges will ask you questions for 20 minutes. Now, the important part about that is that we will all stay in our character as board of director members for the for those 20 minutes. And so you want to continue to address us as, as board members. And then after the QA, we will take off our board member hats and just be our regular professionals. And that's when we'll give you some feedback uh, on your presentation. You're certainly welcome to use the feedback that you get in designing your 10 minute and 30 and 90 second if you wish, although there's no expectation that you do that. It's just if you find it helpful. Some important things to keep in mind, the ethical aspect of your analysis is the most important part. However, these should be described in a simple, practical, common sense fashion. Using technical philosophical terminology or basing your argument on religious or the theological grounds will be considered a serious weakness. Similarly, any member of the team reading his or her part will also be considered a major mistake. I see you, you don't have notes, so we don't have to worry about that. Excellent. And, and you may need to use notes. During this presentation, every member of the team must have some sort of speaking role. So your team is three, yes. but you are all here. Yes. What questions do you have for me before we get started? Um, in terms of like the role playing is the, um, the things are you guys having a specific role within the board of directors? No. Just, just, oh, okay. We're all okay. we are all board members at large. Okay, we know everything. Okay, <laughs> how, do you, how do you like that? Yeah. Okay, judges, are you all ready to go to? Wonderful. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Very much. Ready. Okay. Once again, welcome so much to to IBEC, and please begin when you're ready. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much to the board of directors for taking the time to listen to the presentation. Today, we'll be talking about nepotism in family businesses and how this applies to the world's most leading luxurious brand, LVMH, for here today. Now, my name is Sebi Perez. I am the financial advisor of the LVMH internal review team, together with Seth Birani, who is the ethical advisor, and Ashley Yoshi, who is the legal advisor. And yes, we are the LVMH internal review team, and we're excited to present to you today. This is the agenda of our presentation today. First, we'll provide the foundation of the case some news surrounding the company, and then proceed with the implications, first starting off with the financial implications, then with the legal implications, ethical implications, and then proceed with the analysis and solutions for the problem. Now on to the case overview. LVMH, or Mo Hennessy Louis Vuitton, is a holding company of over 75 luxury good houses. Now these 75 houses span across multiple industries. Some of these industries are the following, fashion and leather goods, watches and jewelry, wines and spirits, cosmetics and perfumes, and even lifestyle, travel, and textiles. You may notice some of the most recognizable brands in the planet, and that has helped cement LVMH in the top spot as one of the most valuable luxury companies. This is currently the Arnaud family tree with Bernard at the top as the CEO and founder of LVMH. Below him are the five children, Delphine, Antoine, Frederick, Alexander, and Jean, who each hold significant executive positions in the massive portfolio LVMH possesses. Now, how does nepotism fit in into the LVMH empire? Well, first, let's define nepotism. Nepotism is the practice of, close, of favoring close associates or relatives within business or employment opportunities. And this has been a large heated topic for debate for quite some time. Think of Hollywood, for example. Now, Bernard Arnault, as of January 2024, has recently released an appointment for Frederick and Alexander to be joining the board of directors. Now, what does this mean? That's a total of five family members in the board of directors, in their membership. Now, this further cements their familial control over the empire. But what does this mean for the business? Recent news has surfaced about people talking about nepotism and how it's unfair for individuals who may be competent, who can't occupy the positions within the membership of the board of directors. Now let's go over to the financial implications of LVMH. I just want to establish here the, the scale and efforts it would take for LVMH. For a corporation of that size, they house over 213,000 employees and counting currently as of this year. And just by the size alone, could you acknowledge the efforts it would take to manage the livelihoods of all these people around the world? They currently report a group share net profit of 15.2 billion euros, 
and a gross revenue of 86 billion euros. Their largest markets are in Asia and America, and their most profitable segment is the fashion and leather goods, which takes over 49% of the pie chart of all the industries that they took point on. They are also leading luxury goods hubs of market capitalization of over $441 billion. And only second is Hermes with $215 billion. Now, if we look at the Forbes billionaire list, Bernard Arnault is currently number one. Now, how did he get to number one? It takes a lot of strategic efforts of the team behind the LVMH board for them to drive success in all value chains. Now, El Bernard Arnault is not the only one who's driving success here. It takes a massive management scale of executives, leaders, and all managers across different levels within the massive portfolio of LVMH. According to Hamid and Urbawangsa in an academic journal of 2021, there are certain corporate governance factors that influence the financial performance of the firm. One of these factors is the corporation size and how there is a positive relationship with the size of the board of directors. With a large size like LVMH, you can acknowledge and safely assume that there is a large size within the board of directors, currently counting 16, and maybe with the possible appointment of two sons, that would be 18 and one. Now, the no family membership, they currently own 48% of shares across the whole empire and over 64% of voting rights. So what does this mean for the business on a different scale? Let's say the legal scale. But before we proceed, I'd love to acknowledge the societal impact of LVMH. They have over 65,000 employees currently helping in a very generous manner to 950 nonprofits all around the world. And in France alone, LVMH is regarded as the number one private recruiter. And they currently house over 118 production facilities in France and 26 in Italy. And currently they have over 2,700 apprentices that they're training that they look forward to place into open job positions for this current year. Now on to the legal implications, which actually will be taken. Thank you, Sammy. Um, in terms of the legal implications, nepotism has been a really big issue in terms of um, in recent years within the French political sector. Um, as you can see, um, nepotism, uh, or starting in 2017, there were several st scandals that came out of notable French politicians who had later have been discovered to have hired their, either their wife or their kids um, for jobs that they never performed using public salaries. Um, this got so bad that um, the French music newspaper Le Monde reported that one in six members of the French parliament had hired their family members. Um, in response to this, the President Frank, um, Emmanuel Macron enacted a moralization law in 2017 that um, aimed to eliminate conflicts of interest by uh, making it illegal to um, hire any family members um, for all um, civil servants and members of parliament, and anyone convicted of this crime would be, um, would, would be punished by a, 10 years, a ban of 10 years from uh, running for office. However, this law only applies to French lawmakers and politicians. This has no say on the legality of nepotism business. Um, as you see, um, there is no current uh, mention of the legality of nepotism in business within French law, um, but there are several legal restrictions that are in place for who um, French corporations can hire and who they can appoint to the board. In terms of hiring general employees overall, um, French, the French laws have a very um, strong non-discrimination policy um, within the French Constitution 1958 and as well as through the French Labor Code. The French Labor Code states that it is illegal to punish, dismiss, or exclude from the hiring processes any candidates on the basis of their gender, race, uh, name, age, marital status, etc., and many other um, factors as well. Um, while this does not explicitly ban nepotism, it does ban the practice of excluding any potential candidates on the basis of nepotism. Um, any candidates who feel wrongly discriminated against may pursue um, threat of criminal proceedings through the uh, um, French legal court, um, and any company or person who is um, found to have um, been discrim discriminating against their employees. Um, the offer of defense may be fined $45,000 and uh, have a maximum of three years of prison sentence, or the company overall may be fined a maximum of 225,000 euros. Um, in terms of who, um, board or who companies can appoint to their board members, there are two laws in particular that pose legal restrictions on um, who companies must appoint. Um, starting with the PACT Act in 2019, 
um, French corporations must appoint at least a minimum of two employee representatives to their board of directors if they have over 12 members. Um, additionally, the Rixian Act, which was passed in 2021, requires a minimum of uh, gender representation on the board of 30% by, um, by March 1st, 2026, for all companies with over 1,000 members. As LMBH clearly has over 1,000 members, and its board member does have, uh, or board of directors does have over 12 members, they must follow both these laws, as LMBH currently is. And um, in order to be traded on French stock exchanges, such as Euronext Paris or SBF 120, there are some legal um, restrictions that French industry corporations must follow. Um, one being that they must have a, 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 some sort of corporate governance code. Um, the one most commonly adopted across French listed companies is the Affirmative Code, which was enacted in 2018. Um, it is a voluntary code, meaning that corporations, corporations can choose not to follow it. However, LMBH does claim to follow this code. The code does have some um, aims in its mission to increase the diversity of its board membership um, in terms of age, experience, nationality, gender, etc. Um, and um, companies who choose to follow this code but um, may um, choose to ignore certain parts of the code and they must write this out in their universal registration document as LMH currently does. Um, in, in following these legal restrictions, um, LMH currently does follow the PACT Act and the Rixian Act and has their own corporate governance code. So we have found that there would be minimal legal repercussions for the practice of nepotism in business. However, as Seth will explain, there are several ethical considerations to address. Right, so <laughs> before I start with the ethical implications, What's really the problem with nepotism, right? It's going to probably keep LVMH as a dominant company in the luxury goods industry, and it's legally at worst in a gray area. So why are there ethical implications in the first place? Uh, you as the board of directors naturally understand LVMH's core principles, which are to be creative and to be innovative, to deliver excellence, to cultivate an entrepreneurial spirit, and to be committed to positive impact. You as the board of directors are also very familiar with LVMH's business model, which is based on a long-term vision, utilizing the heritage of the houses and stimulating creativity and excellence. This is the driving force for the group's success and the guarantee of its future. How does this relate back to nepotism and why does this make nepotism ethical or unethical? You as directors are the highest level of authority in the company. For a company as large as LVMH, it is unlikely that you are able to oversee all of your, all of your employees and ensure that they are living out the values of LVMH throughout their work. You, as directors, being the highest authority, have implemented these principles and therefore should live by them to give your employees a role model of what to look up to and how to conduct themselves in doing business. So leaders must therefore reflect the best of their organization, embodying the principles on which their business is founded on. How does this relate to nepotism? Is hiring family members fundamentally going to be fair for a large corporation, for a large corporation such as LVMH? I'm going to tackle this using two different, using two different arguments. Firstly, how this aligns with the principled argument of LVMH's corporate principles, and secondly, how this aligns pragmatically with what is best for the good of the company. On principle, um, LVMH's model, which I want to get into here, is based on a long-term vision and values the heritage of their houses. These are the two biggest points in favor of hiring based on within the family of the Arnauds. On a long-term vision, the Arnauds have probably been raised by Bernard Arnaud or someone like that was... Um, simple, like that was related to Bernard Arnault. And so they would have similar views to Bernard Arnault and would therefore be best suited to perhaps uh, promoting the company's long-term vision. Because LVMH also values the heritage of the houses, it would necessarily want to promote the children of the Arnault family, who was the founder of LVMH, and want to see them as the new leaders of LVMH in the future. However, we believe that this clashes with stimulating creativity and guaranteeing the future of LVMH. Because if LVMH's future is, is, resting on the, is resting on the heads of the Arnaud children, and they are unable to guarantee this future as effectively as Bernard Arnaud was, they might not be able to be, uh, they might not be able to best embody the company's principles and its uh, success going forward. For reasons I will get into later, we believe that the hiring of family members necessarily stifles creativity and therefore does not stimulate creativity and excellence within LVMH's business model. Now onto the principles. LVMH, um, in hiring of Frederick and Alexander Arnaud, violates the principle of being creative and innovative and being committed to positive impact. It violates the principle of creativity um, because 
when you hire from the same family who has similar values, they are necessarily going to want to then promote similar values to what they've been raised with. People generally want to identify with what they have been with what they have been socialized to believe. And so in doing this, LVMH fundamentally now has this <clears throat> LVMH fundamentally now has a group of people that are in control of the highest level of the company that is committed to now preserving the sort of status quo that they have been raised with. So in doing this, they are not going to be as creative and they are not going to foster innovation as well as if they were to hire an outside candidate. Additionally, in being committed to positive impact, if the RNOs do not have some of the most socially progressive values of the board, they are not going to be able to make as much of a positive impact as potentially an outside, uh, an outside candidate for the board would. An outside candidate for the board, for reasons that I'll get into now, um, <clears throat> An outside candidate of the board would likely be able to bring in different ideas that would contribute more to LVMH's positive impact. But even if you ignore all of the, uh, even ignoring all of this, Bernard Arnault is the CEO. And so maybe we should listen to what he has to say first and foremost, right? After all, he is the one who founded this company. He raised it from the ground up. And so he should maybe have the final say. Arnault here has two conflicting duties. The duty to be a father and to provide for his children and the duty to his business and to provide the best possible outcome for his business. As a father, Arnaud might view that this is the best possible outcome for his children. He is pushing them, he is priming them to be successful financially by giving them directorship of one of the world's largest companies. However, this conflicts with Arnaud's duty to his business and to provide his business with the best possible candidate to ensure its long-term success and growth. In doing so, we believe that Arnaud must value the needs of the many over the, uh, that Bernard Arnaud must value the needs of the many over the needs of the Arnauds. All, fundamentally, LVMH is such a large corporation that what is going to be best for the business is going to be different than what is best for the family. And so in doing this, Arnaud should hire the best possible candidate rather than one of his sons. So now moving forward, um, I'd like to get into some of the pragmatic impacts of not hiring uh, from the Arnaud family. In not hiring from the Arnaud family, if the Arnaud family does not have the broadest scope of issues that could occur for the organization, it is fundamentally going to be less equipped to deal with these issues. Because in hiring from outside, uh, in hiring from outside LVMH, you, you then bring in candidates with different backgrounds. And these backgrounds lend themselves to new methods of problem solving and new methods of innovation that might not, that the Arnauds might not have knowledge of because of their like similar beliefs and values. In doing so, in hiring from outside the company, you are going to be more equipped for future situations that you may not have expected or like predicted would occur in any case in the present. So in upholding the status quo, this necessarily then stifles diversity um, by hiring you, by hiring fa uh, family members, you stifle the opportunity for diversity to be introduced into LVMH, which goes into the legal implications that Ashley expressed earlier and how this might feed into anti-discrimination uh, anti laws. Um, but ultimately, when executives think differently, they are better able to foster creativity because of their new information and their different backgrounds. They are able to then take the company in new directions that can potentially benefit it. And so, in hiring from the Arnaud family, you are fundamentally limiting the ability of LVMH to grow and guarantee its long-term success in the future. With all of these things in mind, I'm going to turn it back to Ashley for our solution and analysis. Thank you, Snap. Um, in analyzing the current state of the LVH's board of directors, um, LVH prides itself on being a global group, and as stated in the universal registration document, they aim to ensure the diversity and creativity of thought within its board of directors, with um, diversity in terms of nationality, age, experience, etc. However, in looking at how the board of directors, directors functions, um, in looking at the governance and compensation committee, is the one is consists of four independent directors who um, review the appointments, new appointments to the board made by the chairman and CEO, Bernard Rinal. Currently, they have a diversity and non-discrimination policy, which factors in the balance of the overall composition of the board of directors um, and, and diversity in terms of nationality, age, experience, qualifications, et cetera. However, as a internal review team, the main issue that we are finding with this is that there's no clear description of what balance entails. Um, Currently, the Governance Conversation Committee has approved of the appointment of Frederick and Alexander. However, in looking at the demographics of the board, um, we can see out of the 14 current members, three or six are women and two are employee representatives, as stated by the PACT Act and the Rintian Act, and nine are currently considered to be independent directors by LBH standards. However, only five are actually considered to be independent by the Affidavit of Code because LBH has chosen to ignore their criteria for independent directorship that revolves around term office. 
Um, however, also on the board of directors, we can see that 12 uh, board of directors um, are French of or are French nationality, 12 are ages 60 to 80, and 11 have a term of office over 10 years with, with LOVH, showing that there's no a lack of diversity in terms of nationality, age, and experience. And this only, only worsened when we look at the implications of um, Alexander and Frederick's appointment. Um, while you can see that there is an increase in diversity of age, because Alexander and Frederick are 28 and 31, respectively, um, the, there's no change in the terms of gender and nationality diversity, because it was still male-dominated, and there's still um, almost 100% French members. Um, and for experiences, as Seth was saying earlier, family members tend to have similar experiences, so therefore there'll be no diversity in terms of experience. And again, with the independent directorship, independent directorship would drop to 57% by LMEH standards, which is to say even worse for the alphabetic code because they've chosen to ignore the age um, or the term of office um, restriction. And all of the Arnold family members actually do fail the independent directorship um, uh, criteria critically because they're all um, could have controlling interest in the company. They're all um, company officers who have family ties to other company officers. Um, and so as we, as we can see, um, as we explained earlier, um, while there are minimal legal repercussions overall, we believe that there should be, there must be reforms to the hiring processes and employment processes of, of LBH's board of directors in order to address rising ethical concerns and financial concerns, as well as to increase transparency overall. Um, and we believe that these practices should be implemented. First, we believe that relations should recuse themselves from the voting processes of um, new appointments. Um, as family members tend to be biased towards each other and would likely vote for each other, which would inhib inhibit um, fairness and due process in the employment processes. Similarly, we, uh, we believe that anonymity should be instated within voting in order to avoid the threat of retaliation and of pressure um, to appoint uh, other family members and um, increase corruption within the office. Um, additionally, we believe there should be a firmer stance on diversity. Um, as we stated earlier, there's no um, clear definition of what a balanced uh, and diverse corporation or board of directors is by the governance and compensation committee. Um, and clearly there's no diversity in terms of nationality, Asian experience, um, even by the governance com compensation committee standards. So we believe there should be a firmer stance on diversity uh, throughout the entire board. And we believe that there should be a stricter adherence to the alphabetic code overall, especially in terms of independence directorships and in terms of the nominations committee overall. Um, the code recommends that um, the, there should be, the board of directors should have a nominations committee that is mostly independent directors and excludes executive officers, as LBH currently does follow. Um, and it should consider the overall diversity of the entire board um, and has stricter um, requirements on terms of diversity of nationality, age, etc. that the um, governance composition committee of LBH currently does not follow. Additionally, the code recommends that the, the composition committee should be separate from the nominations committee, which LMBH currently does not follow, um, and that the nominations committee should perform its own review of candidates before they are appointed, um, which LMBH currently does not follow, as Bernard Renault first picks the appointments and then the uh, governance composition committee then reviews it uh, before they're voted upon. And lastly, we believe there should be a formal evaluation, or the code recommends there's a formal evaluation every three years, either by independent directors or by a nominations committee, or by the nominations committee themselves, um, which LMBH currently does review its board every three years, but there's no clear um, uh, criteria for what they're reviewing upon and for why um, their governance compensation committee um, has been passed. And I'll pass it back to Sunny for our concluding thoughts. Now, given the amount of context we provide, we provided for LVMH, the legal, ethical, and financial implications, especially with the FF Med of Code, and our own recommendations and solutions, we hope that there will be a more transparent process within the voting system in the board of directors across the board that values diversity and competence. And hopefully, this can be implemented not just for LVMH, but for across uh, for corporations all across the globe. Thank you very much. Yay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I will ask the first question and then I'll turn it over to uh, to my judges. Philosophically here, the whole idea of, of nepotism in listening to your presentation is the promotion of family members or heavily related people without regard to their competence. Let's just say that. What if philosophically, let's take it all the way to the margin and say, what if these were the most qualified people you could possibly have in the company, these five kids, there's nobody better on earth 
to take these over. Why do you say no? I can take this. Even if they are the most qualified candidates possible, it is better for LVMH to have a less qualified candidate, not only because of the impacts that they can have in the future, where there are scenarios that are outside of the LVMH, uh, they are no children's scope, which they might not be equipped to deal with, but also for the perception of LVMH by people, consumers, and employees. If LVMH does not hire from outside the company or hire the best possible candidate that is not related to the Arnaud family, employees might begin to feel disillusioned with the company. They might feel as though LVMH only prioritizes relations for these higher up executive positions rather than seeking to promote like a meritocratic ideal of hiring the best possible candidate regardless. Even assuming that they are the best possible candidate, this, fun, this probably won't translate to outside perspectives. Other people probably won't recognize that these people are the best qualified candidates, and they'll just see them as being hired on the basis of their last name. Consumers will probably not like this because they are, it's even less likely to translate to them that these people are the best qualified candidates, and they're just going to see it, again, as a nepotism hire. So they're probably not going to want to buy as much from LVMH, which ultimately will hurt the company financially, even if it is just a marginal Im impact. That hurt still reflects on LVMH, and so it is in their best interest to hire from outside the company. Can you back up your claim that somebody would not buy a consumer good because of who's on the board? That's what I just heard you say. Yeah, if, I, if, I, if I'm looking to get some skincare or a purse, do I really, how much do I care about the five kids that are on the board? I mean, I think I would care insofar as I value a company that seems to try to promote some sort of like social standard or ethical standard of um, adherence to basic ideas, right? Companies that try to minimize their environmental impact, cruelty-free companies, especially among younger, like younger audiences, the brand of a company is going to somewhat be outweighed by the, by the impact that they have environmentally, socially. And so I think that in having these companies that have these nepotistic practices and having these companies that don't value things like environmental safety laws or cruelty-free labor, people are going to be more incentivized to then buy from outside that company. Yeah. But just to add on to that, I think also um, in, the, in the case, I think most consumers, yes, would not tend to look at the who's on the board of directors of the company when they're purchasing a product. But in this case, um, LMH is so famous and all the children um, are celebrities insofar as they're well-known within the industry and um, have made a name for, them, for themselves, um, made themselves household names. So I believe that consumers would care and they would know actually of the nepotism within um, LMPH. Right. Great, thank you. I will stop now, Kiri. So I just I just have a question because I think, you know, you, you raise very good points, but, you know, we're a very profitable company, as you pointed out, and we've been very successful and you know, I think if you ask Bernard, he, he would say that much of this is because of the work of his children as well in, in the various roles they have. And, and I do have a concern because bringing in a number of outsiders could disrupt the balance of our culture, right? We have a culture of success. We have a culture of creativity. And I wonder if you considered you know what bringing in um, folks who haven't grown up in our in our business what they may do to potentially disrupt our culture and potentially impact the business um absolutely so we believe that even in bringing in outsiders you're still only bringing in a small number of them this is for two appointments onto the board of directors and so it is unlikely that they're going to have such a large impact to disrupt the culture of lvmh if they have solutions or ideas that are very unpopular these solutions will probably just be voted down by the board however they can likely bring in new ideas that lvmh board has that the lvmh board has not considered in the past and would therefore be able to bring new insight onto problems that they are currently facing one issue that I can think of off the top of my head is LVMH has recently come under fire for using um, textiles sourced from the Xinjiang province of China. This is one that has been known to use Uyghur forced labor. And so I think that in bringing in maybe an outsider that has a large background in perhaps Chinese provincial politics or some, something of that sort, they maybe have knowledge of that, would be able to maybe divest that sort of labor and bring LVMH back into the spotlight as a company that promotes both ethics and creativity and excellence. There is also a massive driver of goodwill um, when taking in outsiders, as you would say. Um, enculturation is a much more manageable process compared to uh, the diverse and plethora of experiences that these new outsiders would bring into the company. And so bringing them to this culture, you're able to invite them into all the, the whole LVMH process and that itself is more manageable. It's more internal compared to how you can contribute your own experiences that you've learned from the outside that LVMH has not attained because 
they have been so focused on their own path. John. It's like you're muted, Sean. There we go. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. My question is, we're doing really well. Um, and our customer base is, is interested in buying luxury goods that are extremely expensive. And they don't really care about diversity, honestly. They don't, they have other priorities in life. Um, so I don't see what could happen to us if we just keep going. The, I mean, what is the worst that could happen to us if we don't change legally? Yeah, for the legal aspect, there again, there are minimal legal repercussions because again, it's not illegal in businesses within France. Um, so again, there isn't really a huge um, like legal incentive to um, avoid the practice of nepotism. However, I believe that um, as we stated before, um, this would have a huge impact on potential innovation and creativity in terms of uh, products that would be put out from a consumer perspective. Um, again, looking for higher, high, the high quality, um, the fame and brand reputation that comes with LMBH. Um, and in having such an insular board, um, they may um, not be able to innovate uh, and keep up with the like, trends in the market, um, as well as to keep putting out new um, and fresh consumer goods that consumers would like to purchase um, if their board is so restricted um, and they all have the same values and ideas. I would counter that by saying that um, we don't need innovation. We're, we're doing extremely well on very old traditional models that we recreate once in a while. And people don't want uh, innovation. They want the same old, the same purses, the same bags, the same, all the same. And if we change too much, we're gonna lose our, our brand image. Do you have a question at the end there, Sean, or? Yes, so will we lose our, what, what are the risks of losing our brand image? Um, I don't believe we would be losing our brand image just by hiring outside directors. I actually believe that outside directors have a greater likelihood of finding places that even at the worst could just improve business processes. Maybe they could find more efficient ways of shipping things uh, from like place to place. Maybe they could find better routes by which we can deliver things to our stores to then sell to our consumers. Maybe we could find new ways of implementing online uh, our online facilities to make um, to incentivize consumers to buy, we can find better ad placements on our online facilities. For, uh, we, there, are many, there are many different ways in which outside directors can find new ways to innovate, even if it is in small ways that maybe the insular board of directors at present cannot find. So it is in our best interest to find these sorts of people with these sorts of qualifications and bring them in. They're going to want to come in because we're giving them this opportunity to be on the board of directors for such a large corporation. And we are going to want to learn from them because they can provide success to our business long-term, which is what our business model is based on. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let me see, Vera. Yes, let's talk about money. If we go ahead with this decision, what would be the direct financial implications for the company? Could you please repeat that? I don't know. What would be the direct? Uh, Vera, could you repeat? If we go ahead with this decision and nominate them, what would be the direct financial implications of that decision for the company? Now, this is pretty difficult to quantify into numbers. Uh, Ask me, I uh, was going through the financial implications. Um, and the main part of that was establishing the foundation of LVMH and how much scale um, it brings to the consumers all around the world. Um, bringing in new talent, bringing in new people, such as the board of directors um, that are outside of your known family tree, does bring many innovations. And I don't think LVMH should rest on its laurels. It's the number one luxury brand in the world. Um, it, that, must, that further encourages us as the LVMH internal review team to foster more innovation within the team. And although it's hard to quantify in numbers, we do believe these innovations can cost sevenfold into the new businesses that they bring. Imagine Sam Malone from OpenAI going into the board of directors, bringing new AI systems into the LVMH um, value chain, supply chain. Um, and yes, it's, it's pretty difficult to put that into numbers, but it does have a lot of goodwill value that consumers can bring 
to the new business ventures LVMH plans to embark on. Right. And as for the cost of our solution directly, it would actually be very low cost to implement. We don't have an exact number, but I, we believe that anonymizing the voting process and having individual board members with relations recusing themselves from the voting processes are both not exactly the most expensive things to implement. It would just be a matter of making sure the board itself regulates and is able to implement these practices on their own without needing someone else looking over their shoulder to do it. So the most, the, it would be a very low cost solution to actually have these processes implemented. Great. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Nuria, one last question. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was quite interesting, as Shana Bera uh, said. Uh, as a member of this board, um, I'm, I'm concerned about the implications of, of this situation. Uh, from my point of view, probably the most important implications are related to conflict of interest and the loss of creativity is so that when you lose the vision of others, you lose so many things that you can use in your company. But taking into account that we have a family business and I understand that our CEO or our president of the board want that uh, you know, uh, the family are involved in the business because it's a family business. Did you think anything, uh, a solution, a point of the solution similar the one in the text took some years ago when Marta Ortega became the new CEO of the Inditex group. After 10 or 12 years in different positions, she was an assistant in a shop, she was part of the purchase department, she was part of the marketing department. So she made a career in Inditex of 10, 12 years where she, she could know so many things about the business, not just as the daughter of Amancio Ortega, but as part of the company. So when she became the CEO, she had a vision, probably not all the vision of the group, which is, is, is quite difficult. But did you think, did you think or, or do you think that we can do something similar in our group in order to, to can make a balance between the, the president needs and desires and what probably we need as a modern company in the 2024? Sorry, would you mind repeating the question, please? So what do you think we can do? Maybe we can make a, a decision or, or establish a process or a program that uh, the daughters and, uh, of, of our president can follow in order to be a very good member of the board of directors. Can we think something about it? Yeah. Um our uh, solution isn't actually um, excluding all of the are not family members from the board. We do find that there's a lot of value in preserving the family culture as it is a family business, and it values a lot about its heritage. Um, our issue mainly is on the transparency um, and the diversity within the board, um, because um, in hiring only family members, um, while an LMH currently does not hire only family members, but say they were to only hire family members, there would be no diversity in terms of uh, its board, which then, as we've stated, would uh, cycle innovation. Um, so we actually do believe that the candidates um, are qualified. Um, like our, the, our not children do have a lot of qualifications. Um, our main issue, again, is with the transparency. So um, our solution is mostly focusing on uh, increasing transparency, increasing diversity within the board. Um, not limiting the, um, the family members and not limiting the culture um, of LMBH. Yeah, um, to add on to that, I believe that even if Frederick and Alexander are not hired onto the board. There is already an outsized presence of our no family members relative to the rest of the board that LVMH can continue to maintain its family culture, even if Frederick and Alexander are not hired onto the board. Um, to your point about having like a program for these children to develop, I believe that the Arno children are already so entrenched in the company that they likely do have an awareness of the company's going on, but it is in the company's best interest to maybe have them retain those positions and find outsiders that can bring new issues, that can bring new ideas into the firm that we can then implement. And the Arno children that are currently in CEO positions now of the associate brands would likely be able to implement these positions because of their knowledge of the business uh, from the past. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for those answers. And we are now taking our hats off. We are no longer board members. <laughs>
We are turning. We are turning in our makeup. We are turning in our purses. Now we are. We are now. Yeah, you can hang on. I have no need for a purse. So, okay. so uh, now we're we're just going to give you some feedback just based upon our own background and expertise. And we're going to do that for about ten minutes. I I will go ahead and start. I really enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much. And you, you brought some insights into some things that I hadn't thought about naturally because being American, I don't always know what is going on in other countries. And it was very interesting to learn about some of the differences, what happens in France than what happens in the USA. Of course, I also thought about the TV show Succession. Yes. Have you seen that? Yes. Very much. Yeah. <laughs> all the research and everything is like, oh, this is just like Succession. It is. All the articles are Succession. Yes. It is. It is. Yeah. I also like the fact that that you brought up actually that maybe the legal piece is not that big here. It's a lot of times in ethics it isn't. And so if, if you are merely following laws, are you really talking about ethics or are you simply talking about a legal issue? This is a perfect, a perfect example of ethics that are not necessarily very big steeped in in the legal piece. And that's what makes it such an interesting thing with ethics. If, if all you have to do out there is follow laws, well, how much credit do you get for that? But if you, if you make moves that, that are not necessarily changed in legal, that, that's an ethical issue. I love that. I like the fact that you talked about the, the uh, value chain. I was hoping you'd get to that because our questions were about high level consumer sort of things. And what you got at was, what about what's below? And that's the value chain. And that's where a whole lot of stuff, in my opinion anyway, where the other people, people outside the family, I think can become important. So thank you for that. Uh, just from a presentation standpoint, always keep track of who is your audience. And I'm talking mainly to Sebi here. And that is, you were talking to a board of directors and you kept saying they about the company. They, 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 no, it's we. I mean, it's, yeah. it's our company. It's not their company, it's our company. I'm a board member. So just keep that in mind. And, that, and that's a good thing for you to keep in mind going forward in school as well. Everything is about, everything is about the uh, audience. Also keep your hands out of your pockets. Okay. <laughs> I bet you don't even know you did. did you? Yeah. Right. yeah, it was very unconscious. Yeah, it's very unconscious. But I really, really enjoyed the presentation. I think that uh, tomorrow you will do a very good job again. Appreciate it. Thank you. So let's turn this over to Gary. All right. I agree with everything you said. Um, I thought it was a wonderful presentation. Uh, I really love the fact that you chose a pretty squishy issue. You did. Um, yes. and, and that's a technical term, squishy <laughs> issue. But, you know, and and I will also say, if I, if I look at, you know, it appears to me you are actually employees within the organization. So that is a very... Um, that is a very, I wouldn't, I'm not saying high risk. It's, it's a very challenging thing to, to do what you've done as employees of the organization to speak about, um, and, and maybe that's something you could have included as part of, of your speech. You know, we, we are a part of the value chain. We are proud to work here. We, uh, we, we believe that this can only make us better. Right. So talking about it in terms of the fact that you've got a you've got a stake in this uh, as as employees of the organization. And this this means a lot to you. It means a lot to your peers. So that is, uh, I think, one of the takeaways that I would have. It's, but, you know, as as employees, what you did is a very challenging thing, I think, for for many employees to do. And you did it in a professional way. Um, and you presented some very good arguments, and I actually really thoroughly enjoyed it as well. So I thank you for, for raising those issues and for taking on, you know, everybody says, the one thing about conflict of interest is that the people who are engaging in a conflict of interest are really often blind to that. <laughs> and they don't see that what they're doing is a problem because they think they're bringing in the right people. So I'll stop there and move to one of our other judges. Thank you. Sean, can you give us some feedback? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, I I really liked it. It was very interesting. I like the fact that you researched all the re most recent French laws because there have been so many scandals about, yeah. you know, so-and-so hiring their wife or their cousin or whatever. Um, I... 
I think that you're you're biting off a huge chunk because you are trying to uh, how can I say it? innovate an ancient French company that represents French tradition and French luxury and uh, and uh, you know it's a family thing and you don't touch French families you don't you know it's a dynasty. So um, I liked your your different uh, solutions. I like the way you analyze the problem. Um, maybe as a board member, I would have liked sort of a plan for action. What what do you suggest? You know, it could have been a, a, a little thing at the end after your conclusion. If you're interested, maybe we could go in this direction or that. Maybe we could do you know a survey to find out. If we did have more diversity, would it affect consumers? But apart from that, I loved it. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Miriam, how about you? Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can add um, more useful or additional information to the one provided by Sean. I think that uh, she explained very well uh, your presentation. It was quite interesting because you made a, a very good mix between financial, legal, and ethical implications of the nepotism. I think it's something very that can imply most of the groups <laughs> in the world the nepotism. You know, so and it's very but it's the, I think it's the first time that I heard a presentation about that in this competition or in another. So uh, congratulations for that. I think it's very important. The implications of nepotism can be um, very important for the groups and can have uh, financial implications too, or maybe the market can 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 take actions uh, uh, against that. So uh, congratulations for that. Uh, I I really. Uh, enjoy your presentation because the three of you explain very well. The three of you support the responsibility of the presentation. So congratulations for that. You, you speak very clear with a simple and useful words. Uh, for me, it was quite quite easy to follow your presentation, taking into account that I'm Spanish and I'm too far, you know, online. But I, I could understand perfectly your presentation. So thank you very much for that too. Um, and just luck, very luck for, for tomorrow. I hope that you can do so well done today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear me well? Yeah. yeah. Great. Oh, uh, I enjoyed this presentation very much. Congratulations. This was professionally done and professionally delivered. Uh, I like the slides uh, and how the presentation was structured. I like the that it was very streamlined and you didn't jump from one side of the problem to another, from financial to legal and back and forth. It was very streamlined. It was easy to follow. I appreciated the research, as already mentioned by Sean, the research into the, all of those uh, French code of uh, corporate governance and pacts and acts and uh, employee gender representation norms and recommendations. Well done on that. I love that you brought up the values of the company. This is a very good thing to do with the board of directors. When you talk about ethics, the first thing that you, should be leading with is bringing up the values to say like, hey, I'm reminding you that this is what is written about this company. This is what this should be the foundation, right? So I'm not just putting uh, uh, here some, some crazy vague ethics uh, in front of you. This is actually what we stand for. So that was great. Uh, I also love father versus businessman duties conflict. Uh, that was excellent. That was excellent, loved it. In the, the the comparison of board uh, demographics before and after the nomination, although I thought that uh, the slides that followed uh, on the nomination committees uh, co and code recommendations on the evaluation frequencies and all those details, I found them a little bit excessive. Um, that said, on a weaker side, I thought you could have put 
a little bit more thought into the financial implications. Overall, great job. Under. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Do you have any questions for us? Because I know you have two more presentations coming up tomorrow. Is there anything that we can help you with? Yeah, actually, uh, in preparation for the 10 minute presentation, which is more about ethics, I was wondering if you had any more feedback on the ethical implications and how we could maybe improve those or what you thought was really strong and needs to be or uh, needs to not be changed. Any feedback? Let's go to our judges there first. Vera or Sean or uh, Noria, did you have any an answer to that question? What, can you repeat the question, please? I don't think I understood. Absolutely. So the 10 minute presentation tomorrow is mostly focused on ethics. We wanted to see what was either very strong and needed to remain the same or what was on the weaker side for the ethics and what could be improved there. Um, I think what was really strong was uh, this a portrait of the family, because you really you you come over as th this is who we are. So that's really good. The identification of the company with faces. I love that. Um, maybe one of the less strong ones was, I, and I disagree with, I can't remember your name, the other judge was, um, you know, uh, a father's responsibilities compared to uh, his uh, responsibilities to employer. I mean, employees, um, the father can just give them shares and kick them out. I mean, it's no big deal. Okay. And I also, I really like the fact that you took the standpoint and and uh, this is say, when you started out, you said, what's really the problem here? I thought, finally, we're getting to it. Here we go, we're getting there. Not that, not that uh, the, the first two were not important, but the fact that you really showed me, it's like, really, what is it? So mm -hmm. I think that that's something you could do tomorrow is because the judges are gonna say, oh, I mean, what's the big deal? These are just a bunch of rich white people, who cares? Yeah. But I mean, really get in there and just say, what is the big deal here? What are we really about? And I think the judges will will go with the resident. Okay. Again, thank you very much. We really appreciate well, your presentation. Well, thank very you. well done. Thank you. Very thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.